Welcome everyone in the second lecture of Pavement Structure and Design. The undergraduate student, uh, they can also follow my lecture for the highway and traffic engineering uh, as well as for the uh, transportation planning and uh, engineering while the student for the postgraduate studies, they can follow my, my lectures and tutorial for the pavement analysis and design, research methodology, sustainable development and construction. Uh, so today's topic is about permeable pavement. What is permeable? Permeable or why we use such type of a pavement? Permeable means the ability which not allow water to pass through it. We use basically such type of a uh, of a pavement where we need uh, where we need to construct the uh, the place for the for the less heavy loads. Okay and also to reduce the hydrocarbon pollutant as well. Permeable pavement uh, usually gives us a very strong and important management and practice where the, uh, the surfaces such as pedestrian, bicycle, and uh, the places where we, have, uh, we want to treat the storage or storm water, so we use permeable pavement, okay? We have different types of it. Uh, permeable, as you can see uh, in the screen as well. Porous hard mix, uh, pervious Portland cement concrete, and permeable interlocking, and so on. As you can see here, we have different type of a um, porous hot or warm mix of spalt. Okay, so like it is completely flexible pavement which is used in uh, flexible pavement for the purpose to uh, to like adhere the binder and and uh, bring the aggregate together okay adhere means to connect or to to like bandna to adhere material to gather it for the purpose to bind it together so aggregate is a basically a collective term for the mineral material such as sand gravel and crushed uh, stone and so on Maybe you have idea a little bit, or you also already learn about the about the uh, aggregate sources such as uh, igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and as well as the metamorphic rock as well. So, for for like that much long explanation, here is a very important terms binder to uh, to adhere. What will happen if we have a poor adherence? Poor adherence is usually referred to stripping which cause the premature structural failure and plain concrete aggregate which usually contains reactive form of silica which react expensively with the alkalis contained in the cement paste so this such type of a a, a poor adherence could also cause the the premature cracks such as uh, uh, pop out spalling or uh, effects like that okay the second point is the sand and finer aggregate is basically used to reduce the wides in the top layer the next one is about pervious portland cement concrete and such type of a uh, cementous material which bind the material through a conventional concrete together okay as you can see here, a very broad term about the hot mix of spalt and warm mix of spalt. Basically, hot mix of spalt, uh, the, uh, the core difference between both of them is that the hot mix of spalt, at temperature, it usually vary. It give the, the uh, like, usually use in an area where the uh, temperature varies from 300 to 350 degree Fahrenheit, okay? And the construction is basically from the fine sand with the coarse, where we have the more uh, st like sand is basically used. While the uh, the second portion is about the uh, regarding the uh, regarding the uh, HMA, which means the hard mix of spalt is could be categorized in the in the dense graded while in the stone matrix of spalt. The dense graded, which is quite clear from its name, the 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 aggregate size is usually dense and also constructed with the uh, coarse graded material as well. Regarding the, the stone matrix, 
we usually use a spalt binder with the fiber so the fiber could be used is a uh, such as uh, like which could reduce the segregation of the aggregate such as uh, asbestos fiber or something else okay so in stone matrix we have the stabilized mixture which prevent the baking or the bleeding or uh, uh, like the bleeding of the pavement of the of the material in the hot weather if we talk about the the warm mix asphalt the warm mix asphalt is manufactured like hot mix is manufactured at a 300 to 350 while the warm mix is is constructed or like manufactured at 200 and 250 hot mix could be used in a hot area while warm mix could be used in a in a warm area okay uh, the next thing is about its uh, its property which make it more easier to pour and spreading at the lower temperature the lower temperature uh, the warm mix of course is used at a places where we where we need a lower temperature where we have less resources and fuels is required for the warm mix asphalt as you can see here with a very amazing explanation of the of the typical load distribution in the uh, flexible pavement that how the load should be distributed as I mentioned uh, in in the early slide uh, like in the pavement definition that the load should be distributed and transmitted as you can see here the load need to be transmitted and distributed over a large area so the impact should be should be within the large area so for example as you can see here from the figure the load is acting here is a is a kind of a dynamic loading which is moving okay so it's a it's a moving load but its impact should be like divided it should be uh, like transmitted and distributed as you can see here uh, the the typical stress is dis, uh, distribution in the uh, flexible pavement of course about the bitumen layer so in the uh, base layer the we will have the maximum stresses and strain in deformation but with passage of time as you can see here above the subgrade it is almost reached to zero so at the lower grade all the materials all the stresses like because of the material support because of the of the counteract phenomena of the pavement all the material should lead to zero so it below the surface there should be uh, there should be limited vertical and horizontal stresses or it's also it should lead towards zero so here we want to learn the uh, philosophy of the pavement pavement is alive alive means that it it, it contract and expand when temperature rises it expand but when temperature falls it contract so the contraction and expansion is happen because of the increase or decrease in temperature and the binder basically allowed it to happen because of the because of the exothermic chemical process uh, up to now the maximum expansion is recorded up to 31 millimeter like for example from 1.3 from 1.7 centimeter to uh, like such as like the maximum until now, now were like recorded up to 30 or 31 millimeter the second thing is the pavement is basically designed which should subject and counteract the the heavy loads which are repeated on its nature each traffic load repetition basically damage the pavement and material up to up to certain level okay so the pavement are designed to perform uh, the or like facilitate the vehicle up to the up to the uh, certain lifetime or time frame and it should not allow the deterioration up to up to certain degree so in other words uh, pavement are of course fail after its design life but to counter and uh, support and give the the safe ride to the vehicle so the next point is about the performance okay the performance of the of the 
of the uh, failure criteria. So like as you can see here, if we talk about the rut and fatigue, so these both are different terms, okay? So rut is basically the longitudinal depression in a wheel path where the pavement, where the uh, permanent deformation of the pavement uh, could be possible. But because of the viscoelastic material properties, uh, the same repetition basically come back to its original position. So the rut is basically uh, the type of a surface where, where uh, the contraction and expansion both is possible, but it could also come back to its original position. If we talk about fatigue, fatigue is basically due to the uh, repetitive load or series of interconnecting cracks where the, the uh, stabilized base layer is basically affected. So if it's like, you know, up to 10 mm, it's considered as a rut, but if it's reached to the 20 mm, then we consider it as a fatigue, which is quite dangerous in terms of the, uh, in terms of the uh, controlling, okay?